Welcome drone video fans and this is about a 10 minute video featuring the DJI Spark UAV and we've, we're visiting Breakwater Beach in uh, Geneva, Ohio. Uh, Labor Day has gone by and the kids are all back at school so this beach which is normally uh, filled with people um, on any given day uh, is <laughs> basically uh, empty here so what we decided to come out and here and, and uh, and shoot the beach. I was hoping for a little bit, you know, of a sunny day, but um, we get actually got delayed a little bit here. The day that I was going to shoot this, which was a sunny day, I pulled my bike out of the garage and was going to put the spark on the back and ride out here on my bike. And uh, the back tire started dragging, and when I looked down at it, it turned out that there was three or four broken spokes. So we had to get the rear tire uh, of the bike uh, repaired and. That set us back a couple of days, and uh, but we made it out here. And uh, although it's a cloudy and overcast day, it's still uh, a nice enough day. The water temperature uh, on this given day was uh, about 68 degrees, which is uh, Fahrenheit, which is still you know nice enough for swimming. Uh, and but as I said, it's it's after Labor Day, and the kids are all back at school, so I didn't really expect to see. Uh, in any uh, bathers, sunbathers, swimmers, or, or any of people uh, pursuing those sort of activities. What I did see, though, is a, a, a couple of uh, people, you're going to see them up here um, when we get to the rocks, uh, that are, are fishing. They do, uh, they bring uh, fishing rods with uh, bobber setups on them, and then they wa uh, walk out on the rocks and sit down on the rocks and cast out and... Um, and uh, fish and about this time of the year I would suspect that they're fishing for perch most likely uh, th uh, especially this close in I don't um, there are some people that say that there's steelhead and trout that come in this close but uh, I've never seen anybody uh, catching any but uh, if you look up there on the uh, on the uh, by the shoreline by the rocks there you're gonna see uh, a couple of uh, people. They were they actually arrived about the same time I did, and you know got their fishing gear and equipment out, and uh, they they headed out there and uh, getting ready for uh, a day's uh, fishing uh, out here. Um, this uh, uh, you can see that the channel um, that leads from the marina out to the lake. You can see the uh, uh, again the uh, lighthouse, which was featured in a previous uh, video. Uh, this uh, marina was built uh, you know, some 25 or more years ago by the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and it's it's held up very well. There's never been any damage to the uh, to um, you know the uh, marina itself due to erosion. They do have to dredge this channel uh, every spring because of the sand that gets washed back up in there and they have to make it deep enough for boats to get out there's a little uh, weather station along with a bunch of seagulls sitting on the, out on the rocks and they're there and uh, that uh, weather station um, it, you know transmits uh, weather data now we're gonna get a little bit of a surprise here I didn't know about this but when you I, I flew out in regular obstacle avoidance GPS mode and I flipped it into what they call sport mode in sport mode you can fly about five times faster almost 30 miles an hour but it changes the gimbal action from uh, operating uh, what I call normally in follow me mode to uh, what they call uh, FPV mode. Now in FPV mode, uh, as soon as you move your yaw or roll sticks, um, the uh, gimbal swivels in, in that direction uh, and it does so in a somewhat unsmooth manner which you know is not very good for shooting cinem cinematic video so uh, I didn't really know about that until I, I tried it um, so I won't be I won't be using sport mode when I'm shooting videos anymore uh, and once once we realized what was going on we switched it back to uh, GPS uh, obstacle avoidance mode and decided to uh, take a quick look here along the other side uh, this is not part of the beach this is just part of uh, the uh, the landscape uh, along the uh, lake shore. You can see the waves are building. Uh, they're starting to break. This always happens at Lake Erie. It starts off like a 
sheet of glass in the morning and then the waves build. I have a polarizing filter on the uh, Sparks uh, camera and you can see uh, three or four feet down and, and see the rocky bottom. And uh, speaking as a person who has gone swimming in the lake many times, I can tell you that you have to walk about uh, a good you know, 50, 75 feet out before you get away from those rocks and walking over those rocks and bare feet is uh, at least for me is pretty pretty painful so I, I prefer wearing flip-flops to walk out and get over those uh, rocks along the uh, shoreline here you're going to see uh, trees which have uh, fallen over due to uh, uh, the erosive of forces uh, undercutting their root systems and then they fall over into the lake um, matter of fact there's a, a bicycle path that runs uh, along the, the lake shore here which they have now fenced off because they deemed it unsafe because the uh, erosion is getting uh, close to where the bike path is and they didn't want to have any lawsuits or whatever so they they rerouted it and that was kind of disappointing but you can see uh, here one of the one of the trees that fell over and it's you know it's uh, sort of dying there um, it's and part of it is already bleached out I imagine by next year the entire thing will be bleached out but uh, um, we haven't really hit the, th the point of the season where we get the worst erosion which is uh, late October and November um, uh, when the uh, winds come barreling ac straight across the lake from uh, from Canada and further north and uh, they just uh, really take a, a toll on the uh, shoreline you can see some of the effects um, of on the uh, shoreline here where the root systems and of various trees and have been undercut and uh, here's another tree that uh, is probably not going to be uh, seeing a, a next year it'll probably be completely dead by next year uh, and a lot of these other trees that are right along the uh, shoreline uh, uh, will probably be joining them and it's uh, you know like a continual thing that uh, happens along here uh, on on the shore due to the weathering and the erosion and uh, we're flying sideways by the way here and the, the spark spark is flying real nice we there's a couple of nice big uh, dead driftwood logs and I was standing right there and allowed the spark to fly in front of me and that's about the beginning of the beach right here and we're gonna fly sideways here and take in the um, the beach area plus what's a little bit beyond the beach uh, when we get to, once we get a little bit further here about right here what's beyond the, the beach beyond that greenery that you see there is the uh, parking lot and you'll get a full view of the uh, parking lot uh, when we uh, get some altitude there's a one path that leads up to it and uh, you'll see uh, that a little bit more later on um, but uh, the, you see some tire tracks there that during the summertime they do uh, drag and rake this beach the uh, they have already put away the tall yellow uh, guard lifeguard stations which are usually posted that uh, red white and blue building in the distance uh, that is uh, changing and restrooms and showers for people for people who come down swimming and uh, again we're gonna get up to about to where the uh, uh, volleyball and that is uh, that still has not as of the time that this video was shot was not uh, taken down but I imagine when I, there it is right there um, I imagine when I go out the next time that it's it's probably going to be uh, uh, taken down so uh, at this point we're going to get some altitude and give you a shot of uh, not only the parking lot which you're going to see there holds a lot of cars and my little white car is up there and the in the front close to uh, uh, where you can have easy access to the beach and now we're going to get a, you know sort of a, a panning shot of the uh, entire beach you see that it's it's um, you know pretty wide it's very nice beach um, total distance from back where I was out to those rocks is about 1500 feet or about 500 yards or a little less than 500 meters I guess you could say um, and uh, it's it's very uh, well maintained and uh, as I was shooting, uh, you know, some people came down. Uh, these people here, I think, were just uh, wanted to visit the beach and come down and look for some uh, shells or whatever and see what 
see how it uh, looked out at the lake. But uh, in another uh, group after this, uh, we're going to uh, see when we ch change uh, here that to uh, a couple of people that brought their dog down. And this was like uh, the opening shot uh, with this dog. Got to watch uh, letting your dog go out in the water because uh, a lot of times they'll come home and they'll have a fishy smell to them and you have to give them a bath. But uh, he uh, looked like he was enjoying himself walking in, in the water there. And uh, anyways, um, this was just uh, uh, kind of a, a short little video showing uh, the beach here, Breakwater Beach in uh, Geneva, Ohio. And... Uh, we do most of the videos on of uh, nature things like this, so hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them in the comments section, and uh, we uh, invite you to come back again. Uh, we try to get a, a video up once a week, and uh, sometimes uh, if something pops up, we don't get one up once a week, but uh, we do try and get one up once a week. Thanks for stopping by and watching, and uh, come back again soon.